All right, I'm out here today taking the first shots out of the 10 millimeter four inch Rock Island. Pretty excited about that. We've got the Infinity Targets uh, self-healing target out there. Uh, they sent us that and we're gonna check it out, see what it's all about and see how well it works. How many of these Rock Island guns have I reviewed so far? Let's see, there is the uh, 10 millimeter full size double stack without the rail. There's the 10 millimeter full size double stack with the rail and uh, the threaded barrel. There's the nine millimeter double stack full size. All of those guns, great guns, love them. I enjoyed those guns so much that I wanted to get my hands on another Rock Island gun. So I reached out to Rock Island Armory's marketing department and they agreed to send me out this 10 millimeter MS TAC Ultra and a little bit of ammo to do a review on. All of you 10 millimeter fans out there know that 10 millimeter does not come cheap. So I definitely appreciate the 100 rounds that they sent me with this gun. Of course, that's just a drop in the bucket. You can't do a review with just 100 rounds. During my testing, I burned through the 100 rounds of Arms Corps ammo that they shipped me, as well as about 400 rounds of this SMB. And I believe there's 50 rounds of the uh, Underwood... Uh, hard cast ammo that I that I used through this gun as well. It might have been 40. I might have like one eight round mag uh, worth of that stuff left in one of my ammo boxes. Now I would have liked to have put more rounds through this gun, but I have it for a limited time. It is a loner. So we put about 550 rounds through it, give or take, and we're going to call it good at their for right now. So as part of my usual disclaimer, yes, Rock Island did ship me out this gun uh, at no cost to me up front to go ahead and test out. But you guys know my opinion is mine and mine alone. I can't be bought, influenced, or paid for. Oftentimes, even when I am sent something by a company at no cost, I end up saying some stuff that that company may not necessarily agree with. But that's because I am blunt and brutally honest. Like I said, this gun is a loner, which I think is super cool. But also, when I'm done with the review, I have the option to go ahead and send it back to Rock Island, or I can go ahead and keep it and buy it from them. At the end of this review, we'll talk about whether or not I'm going to ship it back, or if I absolutely have to add it to my collection. All right, let's just jump right into this thing, shall we? Uh, these Rock Island guns, they are made in the Philippines and then they're imported here to the US. While there are cheaper brands out there, there's also a huge difference between your average you know, budget-friendly 1911 and what you're going to get with a gun from Rock Island Armory. Spoiler alert, these guns are incredible and for the price, you can't beat the quality. This is the MS, or mid-size, single stack 10 millimeter. Aside from its weight, it is actually a great gun that you could actually use as you know, a concealed carry piece. Its barrel length is four and a quarter inches, which puts it just over um, a Glock 19 or Smith & Wesson M&P, in terms of barrel length, of course. The flip side of that is that the thick steel slide and frame, they add quite a bit of weight to the gun. Here I've got an inside the waistband holster from Pack and Holsters. I'll leave some information for those guys down below in the uh, description. I carried this gun around inside the waistband for a while and while the holster itself is great, damn was it exhausting carrying this all steel 1911 uh, when I'm used to carrying the Hellcat Pro. I'm not sure that inside the waistband is the best way to carry this gun, but we'll get to that a little later on. While the weight of this gun may seem a little overkill when you carry it, you're definitely going to be thankful for that extra weight when you start sending some full-powered, uh, hard-cast ammo downrange. Now, in terms of a carry gun, it does seem kind of weird carrying a gun that only holds eight rounds. That's something I have a real hard time getting past. And please, spare me the argument down in the comment section about how if you can't get the job done in eight rounds, uh, you know, whatever. Someone always pops in the comments and leaves uh, some sort of comment like that. Never want to have a debate or a conversation about different situations that may arise. It's just a cut and dry, you don't need more 
than X number of rounds. Now that I think about it, these people are just as bad as the gun grabbers, trying to tell me I don't need high capacity magazines. At the same time, I've shot the high capacity Rock Island guns. I have the nine millimeter here. This one is from my personal collection. They do handle great, but the double stack 1911 Rock Island Armory guns, they have such a thick grip that they're not going to necessarily be comfortable in everybody's hand. The grip on this gun, way more comfortable than any of the other Rock Island guns that I've shot. I don't know what the fuck happened there. There's only three rounds. Honestly, it really just fits. Like, perfect. While I'm talking about grip, I really just want to throw this out there. I would really love to see Rock Island do a three-piece modular double stack 1911, 2011 style gun. The Springfield Prodigy was not the budget-friendly double stack 1911 that we were all hoping for. If anyone is going to be able to pull off making a budget-friendly 2011, it's going to be Rock Island. You know what? I'm having a day. I'm really getting sidetracked here. This gun's grip, it is very solid. Of course, it's got your standard G10 grips, just like basically every other 1911 on the market. If you wanna upgrade into something a little bit more classy, a little bit more customized, click that link below for Brownworks. Take a look at their custom grips for all 1911s. Uh, they make some for some other guns, uh, like Berettas and things. These grips are amazing, high quality, custom, incredible customer service, and they also make a set of grips that will go ahead and accommodate for the magwell that's on this gun. The magwell has a weird hook mounting system, so you can't just use any standard grips. You have to have some that are machined out so that the hooks uh, don't make the grip stick up. I think it's pretty cool that Rock Island added a magwell to this gun. I like having that slight funnel at the bottom to help smooth out mag changes. At the same time, not only does it function well as a magwell, but let's just be honest here, it looks really good. You really can't beat the look of a pistol with a magwell. I like that square, boxy look that it has. Reminds me of basically every car from the early 80s. Of course, we got the three slot pick rail, we've got an ambi safety, skeletonized trigger, skeletonized hammer. I like how Rock Island just tries to pack value in all of their guns. I mean, look at these sights. We've got adjustable rear sights and we have the fiber optic front sights. Who else is putting those on pretty much every gun that they make? So far, every Rock Island gun that I've handled has those sights. Look, this is my 9mm, same exact sights. Both of the other 10 millimeters that I shot, same thing. Aside from not being the brightest fiber optic sights that I've ever seen, you know, the sighting systems on these guns, they're actually really good. Do you really need an adjustable rear sight on any gun, let alone, you know, one of these guns? I don't know. But to me, it just goes into that amount of value that they pack into their guns. Everything on this 1911 just feels solid. The ambi safety has a nice positive click to it. The fitment between the slide and the frame, it's close, it's tight. There is no movement in there whatsoever. Whoever did the final fitment between those two parts on this one uh, did really well. That's something that I've noticed with all of the Rock Island guns. Just looking at my nine millimeter here, it's the same way. Um, they did a really good job, in fact, if I look at the fitment between the slide and the frame, like on my staccato, there's definitely more of a gap in there uh, than there is with either of these two Rock Island guns. Both of these Rock Island guns, the slides run nice and smooth. Even though the spring on this 10 millimeter is pretty heavy, I mean, it is still buttery smooth. I think if I were going to be hypercritical of this gun and just really dissect it. I would probably point out two things. First off, it makes no sense why they didn't put any front serrations on this slide. Um, I, I don't personally do a lot of manipulations with the front of the slide. Um, I mean, if you do, that's fine. It, I really don't have an opinion on it one way or the other, but I do feel like for the people that do like to manipulate the slide from the front, there should be serrations as well as the fact that just visually, 
I think that it would look a lot better if they had the serrations in the back as well as in the front. Now the serrations that they do have here in the back, they are uh, deep enough and aggressive enough. I can get a great grip on them no matter if my hands are wet and I've had this thing out in the rain multiple times. It's basically rained the entire time that I've had it. Um, but I, I haven't had any issues of slipping. The grip on these serrations is really good. I just personally would like to see another set in the front. And it's weird because my nine millimeter has uh, those serrations both in the front and rear of the slide. And I think that's a better look overall uh, than just having them in the rear. The other thing about Rock Island guns, and this is Rock Island guns in general, it's not just this model, it's basically all of them, and that's the finish. They use a parkerized finish, and I've never really been a fan of that. It looks okay, I guess. It's kind of durable. It just feels dry. I mean, yeah, it's a dry material. It's it's not like this is like dripping wet. It's I know it's a weird way to describe something um, like this, but that's it's all I got. It has kind of a dry powdery feeling and it's weird when something rubs up against it, it leaves like weird marks. They, they rub off relatively easily, but I don't know, I, I'm just not a fan of parkerized finish. Now I know changing the finish is going to factor into the price and that's one of the big positives about Rock Island is that they make a quality firearm at a low price. Obviously, if Rock Island switches it up and starts using like a DLC coating on their firearms, that's going to drive the price through the roof. Maybe not through the roof, but it's it's going to add on an additional cost. Realistically, for a gun in this price range, it's fine. I can live with it. It's no big deal. Um, it's just not really what I prefer. And if I'm being honest, I have had this 9mm for... I want to say close to three years now. I, I really do shoot the crap out of this gun. Um, it doesn't have any scratches or any damage in that parkerized finish. It's held up really well. And while it does bug me, it hasn't bugged me enough that I've stripped it down and, and changed the finish. Even though I do Cerakote on the weekends, I could have Cerakoted it any number of colors and I haven't. So it's not a huge deal. It's just something that I'm not real fond of. Okay, enough stroking the cat. Let's get to business already. How does a budget-friendly 1911 manufactured in the Philippines really work? Well, the Arms Corps ammo that they sent me, it ran really well. That stuff and the SMB that I have, that I've put through it, uh, both are 180 grains. Nothing too heavy. I'd call that just general range use ammo. When I changed over to the hard cast ammo, the 200 to 220 grain Underwood, I could definitely feel the difference, but it's not like it was like uncontrollable or like it affected uh, my accuracy at all. Using that heavier ammo, the 200 to 220 grain, um, that's where this heavier uh, slide and frame come into play. You see, I have the 10 millimeter M&P and it, it runs that ammo just fine. I haven't had any issues. Um, it's, it's not uncontrollable either, but when I put the 10 millimeter M&P next to this gun, this is a lot more pleasant to shoot that uh, 220 grain ammo out of, and that's because it has so much weight behind it to absorb that excess recoil. I really love shooting this gun. It, you know, it feels good in the hand. It's accurate. I like the way that it feels when it shoots. It's just a shame that 10 millimeter is so friggin' expensive to shoot because you know what? This gun just feels right between the weight and the way that it feels in my hand. You know, I take it out to the range almost every time that I go and I almost feel like I can't miss with it. Now I've been using steel and cardboard targets pretty much exclusively until recently when I got the Infinity Target. I wasn't sure if the Infinity Target was really gonna be able to stand up to the 10 millimeter round, but honestly, so far, I put almost all of the 550-ish rounds that I've put through this gun into that Infinity Target, and it's done really well. Now, 1911s are generally regarded as some of the more accurate of all handguns. That of course comes from things like the grip angle, the uh, fitment between um, frame and slide, and of course those super dreamy triggers. This 1911 certainly does not disappoint in that category. 
if anything, I'd say that I was surprised at how well it does for having a four and a quarter inch barrel when most 10 millimeters are five inch. Where does this gun fall in terms of usage? What are you actually going to use it for? Well, I think because of its overall size, I think it really can be considered as a defensive pistol in many situations. As a concealed carry, yes, it can be done. Comfortably? Well, that just really depends on you. It's a little bit heavy, and if you're carrying it inside the waistband, it's a little awkward. But if you're okay with carrying a heavier gun as a concealed carry weapon, this thing works great. You could also use it as a bedside gun as well. Slap a weapon mounted light on this thing and you're good to go as far as defending your home in the middle of the night. Again, it's a great shooter that you can rely on. Now me personally, the thing that really attracts me to this gun is as some sort of you know backpack or hiking type gun. I think for me, I would go with either one of those chest rigs or probably a drop leg holster. I think because of the weight, a chest rig would probably be the better option. Now I've got the G-Code drop leg platform somewhere here in my office, it's here somewhere. And I also have a outside the waistband holster from Pack and Holsters for this gun that mounts to that G-Code platform. I can go ahead and use that with my G-Code battle belt or with the drop leg platform. Um, you know, if I were to go out hiking, I could put whatever hard cast ammo I want in this gun, go ahead and put it on the drop leg platform, be out on the side of a mountain, and if there comes a situation where there is a bear that wants to eat my face off, um, I have no doubt in my mind that I'm gonna be able to handle this gun well, and it's gonna be able to do the job of keeping me safe. Wolves, bears, cougars, the kitties, not the older ladies that are at the bar trying to get the young dudes, but you know, the kitties. Bigfoot, chupacabra, all of those things. That's their ass if they try to get me on the side of a mountain while I'm carrying this gun. The only thing that I think would make this better suited to, you know, that kind of stuff is if they put an optic cut on it. Um, I, I really do like the sight system that's on here. But if I could add a red dot, I'd be that much happier. The four and a quarter, it is easy to handle in tight spaces. You can move it around quickly to get on target. Um, it's a great gun and you still have plenty of velocity to get the job done. You know, I put 550 rounds through this gun, give or take, and I can tell you that I think that it's a great quality gun. I think that it's reliable. I think that it's accurate. I think it's gonna do you well if you're looking for a 10 millimeter 1911. And you guys know me, I'm not shy about giving a hypercritical review. I get a lot of shit from people who think that, you know, I'm overly critical at times. I think in this case though, there are very few negatives that I can say about this Rock Island Armory 10 millimeter. If it fits within your personal use case scenario, then it's the perfect gun for you. If you want a 10 millimeter 1911, that is in that four to four and a quarter inch range, then look no further. I think if you get your hands on this mid-size 10 millimeter, like me, you're gonna have a real hard time letting it go. And that pretty much sums up where I'm at with this thing. My test period is up, unfortunately. And it's time for me to decide whether or not I have to add this to my collection or if I'm going to put it back in its case and ship it back to the good people at Rock Island Armory for it to be passed on to somebody else. Now I've said multiple times in the past, I'm an addict. I love buying and collecting guns that I like, that I find interesting, that are comfortable in my hand, that I enjoy shooting. The question is though, do I really need another 10 millimeter? The one that I have is expensive enough. Do I really need a second one? Do I really need another 1911? Yeah, yeah, I, I gotta keep it. I, I can't send it back. I can't do it. This gun just fits my hand too well. It's too accurate. It shoots way too smoothly for me to let somebody else have it. That means I guess I better get online to the Brownworks website and start figuring out what kind of custom grips that I'm gonna order to put on this gun. Cause you know me, nothing's going in my gun safe without being modified at least a little bit. And 
Since this gun is already as badass as it is, really the only thing I can think of that it needs is, I don't know, maybe some sweet snakeskin grips or maybe a set of grips with my logo on them. Before I get out of here and start ordering stuff to put on this gun, I just want to say thanks. Thank you guys, each and every one of you for watching. I seriously appreciate all of you. This channel would cease to exist if it wasn't for viewers like you. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys back here real soon.